So now we're just going to look at a quick example of how effective streamlining can be at decreasing friction forces. So we're going to compare uh, two struts on an air, possible struts on an airplane. One strut is going to be just circular, so you just take a pipe and use that as your as your you know structural support. We're going to assume that the plane is traveling at 50 meters per second, so well below our 0.3 Mach, so we're good and incompressible and can in air and can go ahead and use our incompressible assumptions. We're going to say that the diameter for the strut, for both struts, the diameter is going to be, uh, the diameter will be 50 cent, uh, sorry, 5 centimeters. Diameter equals 5 centimeters. So they're both going to have the same, you know, frontal area to the, uh, to the wind. Uh, so this will be D. They're both the same D in that direction. But obviously one of these is circular. So we know that if it's a high Reynolds number above, I think we said 30, it's going to have a flow separation. And the other one we're hoping is, is shaped in such a way that it will encourage streamlining. So the streamlines will stay close to the object and will not cause flow separation, which we have, we believe reduces friction. So for the circular strut, uh, for either strut, we can calculate the Reynolds number. Reynolds number based on D, of course, we've got our 50 meters per second as our velocity. And we've got our diameter, which is the same for both, 0 0.05 meters. And we've got the uh, viscosity, the kinematic viscosity for air, 1 times 10 to the minus 5 under standard conditions, meters squared per second. So our Reynolds number comes out to be about 166,000. So that's a solidly turbulent. We definitely would have flow separation behind the cylinder. Uh, and we can look up what the actual CD would be, the coefficient of drag would be for either of these objects. Now, again, how you look this up, the coefficient of drag depends on Reynolds number sometimes, or certain regions where it's constant, certain regions where it's not. So looking these up can be very complicated. You've got to find the right tar charts and tables. But at this particular Reynolds number, if you look up a circular cylinder or a long circular cylinder, CD for this for that circular cylinder is about 1.2 at this Reynolds number. I should have said we want to give this thing a length as well, though. I'm going to give it a length of 36 centimeters. So that's my length. So it's you know it's a relatively long relative to its diameter, not super long, but anyway, this CD is 1.2 for a uh, for this. We expect uh, this CD is a little higher than the one we saw earlier. If you look back in your notes, this CD actually drops a lot. If the Reynolds number goes above about 300,000, so that's just interesting. So the CD does depend on all kinds of things, but right at this particular Reynolds number, it's about 1.2. We know the definition of the drag coefficient. C sub D is equal to the force of drag, you know, one half rho u infinity squared times a, uh, like that, right? So we can calculate the drag force. So the drag force, very simply, one half rho u infinity squared a times uh, cd. Uh, we need the area. That area is the frontal area. So that's the area you know from the looking at the cylinder from the stream position. So the frontal area is equal to the length of the cylinder times its diameter. So that's the frontal area. And we can easily calculate that. It comes out to be 0 0.018 meters squared. So that's our a for this formula. And we plug all of that in, FD equals one half. My rho is there one kilogram per meter cubed, roughly for air. I've got 50 meters per second squared. I've got 1.2 as my C sub D and 0 0.018 meters squared for my area. Okay, so I'm gonna crunch that into my calculator. Point five times one times fifty squared times one point two times point oh one eight, and I get twenty seven. So the drag force is about twenty seven newtons. For that cylinder, so if it's a cylindrical strut, the drag force is about twenty seven newtons. Now, if I go with a streamlined strut instead. Um, it's going to be different. And if I, you know, I'll draw the picture so we see what's happening. 
And we have the stagnation line going in here. We have this. We know the flow is separating. So it doesn't go back to the back side there. I have two separate, have two separation things here. Maybe it looks like this. I don't really know exactly where it's separating here. That's something that people do study. And I have the five centimeter diameter. So this is all over circulation zone in here of some kind. Uh, things spinning around in there. If I go with a more streamlined strut that has the same diameter, but I hope has a better shape, something more like this, more like a teardrop. So I'm gonna have the same five centimeter diameter here. So the same, same area, same stagnation point in the front, basically the same flow in the front. But now what we're hoping is gonna happen is that the flow will stick to the body and you won't have that, um, that recirculation zone. And we are told that that should reduce the drag coefficient. So if you looked up the drag coefficient for a strut of this type, more of a teardrop shaped strut. The CD comes out to be about 0.035 at that Reynolds number. So then I go ahead and use the same formula. I've got F of D, the drag force is equal to one half, rho U infinity squared, CD times A. Um, and the A is the same as before because it's still the frontal area. So it's just that diameter times L. A still equals just DL, which we said was equal to 0.018 meters squared. So that didn't change. So the only thing that has changed is the drag coefficient. So 0 0.5, 1 kilograms per meter cubed. I realized that maybe I should have used a 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed for air, but it doesn't affect our results here. We're looking to compare these two. So uh, you know, it doesn't really matter which, which one I use as long as I'm consistent, use the same density for air. Um, and then 0 0.018. Uh, meters squared. But if you're at, sitting there scratching your head wondering why I'm using one kilogram per meter cube, it's just because that's about right. I just didn't really care. So that's that's the answer. Um, so anyway, that's my drag coat, my drag force for the uh, for this teardrop shaped strut, and that comes out to be 0 0.788 newtons. So we went from 27 newtons to 0 0.788 newtons just by changing the shape. Nothing else changed. The velocity didn't change. Uh, so 3% of drag uh, that occurs for circular cylinder. And, you know, circular cylinder is not a terrible choice. This isn't like we chose a parachute for one of them. We chose a, a reasonable strut. It's like a simple pipe, 5 centimeter pipe. But that has, you know, hugely, hugely more, more drag than this teardrop. I mean, they're the same frontal area. So this really illustrates just how effective streamlining can really be. I mean, just by adding material to the back of this, basically just adding material, you could shape the material basically like this. You just add material to the back of this cylinder and you end up with a, you know, a 90 something percent reduction in your drag force. So this is well worth doing. Uh, and this is why you see people, particularly in the car industry, you know, playing with how to add material and shape uh, car design and truck designs. Uh, so that they can get some of these, this pickup, this huge, huge benefit you can get, this huge reduction in drag, simply by changing the backside shape of the object without changing its front side shape really at all. So very important message here. Streamlining uh, can be extremely effective. Two objects of basically the same size having enormously different drag coefficients uh, based on simply the shape of the backside of the object.